what's going on guys, Jin here, and this is my take on a Meteor build for Season 3 of Diablo 4. It's got a fun playstyle that allows you to rain loads of fiery pain down upon your foes, and it's strong enough to take on all tiers of dungeons and vaults, as well as having enough damage for exploding those bosses like Lilith, even without any gear changes. Although you still have to dodge her fiery crap, so good luck with that. Before we get on with this, if you like these guides and want more content like it, please leave a like, subscribe, and hit the bell as it would really be appreciated. Thank you, and now let's get to the build. So first up we have the skills, and we're going to take two into Firebolt. Then we're going to come down and take one in Potent Warding, one into Devastation, and three into Elemental Dominance. Then we're going to grab one into Flame Shield, and we're going to go for the Shimmering Flame Shield. Then we're going to take 5 into Teleport, and go for Shimmering Teleport. Then we're going to take 3 into Glass Cannon, 3 into Elemental Attunement, 1 into Ice Armor, and go for the Mystical Ice Armor. Then we come down to our Conjuration skills, we're taking 3 in Align the Elements, 3 in Protection, 3 into Conjuration Mastery, 3 into Precision Magic, 1 into Ice Blades, and we're going for Summoned Ice Blades. Then we come down to our Mastery skills, of course we're going to take 5 into Meteor, then we're going to go for the Wizard's Meteor. Then we're going to take 3 into Inner Flames, and 3 into Devouring Blaze. Then for our Ultimate skills we're going to take Deep Freeze and all the nodes, and for our key passive, we're going to take Esu's Ferocity. So, if you're not using Starful Coronet, you would want to change a few things. You would take out 2 in Inner Flames, 2 in Align the Elements, and then the Shimmering Flame Shield and Enhanced Flame Shield would also go. And you would put the points into Mana Shield, 3 points. And you can put the other three into Fiery Surge. That will help you cast a lot more Meteors and be a lot more tanky with the Mana Shield. So next up we have the Paragon Board. So for the Paragon Board, we're going to take Tactician as our starting glyph. That's going to give us 10% increased damage for 4 seconds after casting a defensive skill. As well as a boost to all rare nodes within range. So we get bonus non-physical damage and bonus resistance to all elements. Our second board is going to be the Searing Heat board, and we're going to grab that node. And we're going to put in the Elementalist Glyph here. And that's going to give us bonus fire damage because of the three magic nodes around Flame Touched. And we also get Dealing Fire, Cold, or Lightning damage to an enemy, increases all damage you deal to them by 5% for 10 seconds, stacking once per element. So a 15% damage boost there. Our third board is going to be our Frigid Fate board, also going to take that node. And we're going to put in the Adept Glyph here for the huge bonus to our Mastery Skill damage, and the 20% increased area the Mastery Skills get. For the fourth board, we're going to be using the Enchantment Master board, and we're going to be putting in the Reinforced Glyph here. So that's going to give us damage reduction, 15% while we have an active barrier, and also we get bonus to all rare nodes within range. So again we get resistance to all elements, and non-physical damage. For our fifth board, it's going to be the Burning Instinct board, and we're going to be slotting in the Destruction Glyph here, so that gives us a huge amount of critical strike damage, as well as critical strikes increase all damage the enemy takes from us by 2% for 10 seconds, stacking up to 12%. For our 6th board, it's going to be the Ceaseless Conduit board, we want that for all the Dexterity nodes we have here. That'll help out with our Control Glyph, giving us a huge amount of damage to crowd controlled enemies, as well as dealing 10% increased damage to Slowed or Chilled, or 20% increased damage to Stunned or Frozen. So it really helps us out there with the Raiment, good synergy with the Stun. And for our 7th and final board, it's going to be the Static Surge board, because it gives us a quick, easy way to get another Glyph here, and use the right stat nodes to get the bonus effect. 
So we're going to use Flame Feeder, and that's going to give damage to burning enemies, as well as dealing 10% increased direct damage to burning enemies. Your other option would be the Territorial Glyph. So that's pretty much it for the Paragon board. All of this is going to be in the Build Planner in the description below. And of course that's also going to contain the Skill Tree, and the Gear, and Gems, and Seneschal Construct, all of that good stuff. So make sure to check that out if you want to view this at your own pace. So next up we have the enchantments and the construct. So for the enchantments we're just using the ice blades enchantment. For every 40 seconds in cooldowns we spend, we spawn an ice blades on a random enemy. And we're also going to be using the meteor enchantment. So on lucky hit we have up to an 8% chance for meteor to fall on enemies. So really helpful there, just a lot more damage, and a lot more cooldown reduction and vulnerable procs thanks to our Ice Blades. So for the Seneschal Construct, we're going to be using the Tempest Governing Stone, and we're going to be using the Breaking Support Tuning Stone, Mockery Support Tuning Stone, and Arcing Support. So I'm using Mockery Support here on this character because the Safeguard Support is really low, otherwise I would be using that. So if you have the Evernight Tuning Stone, then you would use that in place of Mockery slash Safeguard. For the other Governing Stone, we're going to be using Flash of Adrenaline. And we're going to be using Tactical Support, Duration Support, and Initiative Support. So if you have the Genesis Tuning Stone, you would be using that in place of the Initiative Support. Now let's move on to the Gear. So for the gear, I'm going to list the affixes you want to look for from best to worst on the left hand side of the screen here. We're going to start with the helm, and we're going to use Starfall Coronet. That is a drop from a beast in the ice. It's going to give us max life, cooldown reduction, ranks to Meteor, and a lot of lucky hit chance. Also, Meteor now has two charges with an 11 to 6 second charge cooldown instead of a mana cost, and drops three additional Meteors around the target. So this really changes the way the build works and how you play it, as obviously you don't use mana for anything with this build if you have a star for coronet. Also, Meteor's enchantment effect and enhanced Meteor drop one additional Meteor, so a lot of extra damage there. If you don't have access to a star for coronet, you would look for a helm with cooldown reduction, total armor, max mana, and max life. If you can't get those, look for intelligence or all stats. And for the aspect, you would use Everliving, to take 20 to 25 percent less damage from CC'd or vulnerable enemies. Next up we have the chest piece, we're going to be using the Raymond of the Infinite. So that's going to give us intelligence, damage to close, damage to stunned, and ranks to glass cannon. And also after using teleport, close enemies are pulled to us and stunned for two to three seconds. On the downside, teleport's cooldown is increased by 20 percent. But it's a small price to pay for the ability to clamp enemies up under our meteors at will and CC them at the same time. So if you can't get a raiment, you would use a giga defensive chest piece. So something with total armor percent, damage reduction, damage reduction from burning, damage reduction from close, or damage reduction from distant. And as for the aspect, you would use something like the Unwavering, so taking direct damage has a 2-6% chance to reset the cooldown of one of our defensive skills. Next up we have the Gloves. We're going to be looking for something with crit chance, lucky hit percent, attack speed, and intelligence. If you can't get those, then look for all stats, damage to injured, or lucky hit to slow if you're really desperate. Now as for the aspect, we're going to be using Shattered Stars here, so Meteorites fall around Meteor, Dealing 30% in my case of Meteor's damage on impact, so a lot of extra damage there. Meteorites additionally burn enemies for an amount of damage over 6 seconds. Next up we have the Pants. We're not going to be using Tybalt's Will, we're just going to be using some Giga Defensive Pants. So we're going to look for total armor percent, but also ranks into Meteor. As well as damage reduction from close, and damage reduction from distant. If you can't get those, then you're looking for damage reduction, or damage reduction against burning enemies. As for the aspect, we're going to be looking for aspect of disobedience here. So that's going to give us increased armor for 4 seconds when we deal any form of damage, stacking up to 66% in my case with a max roll. So, huge armor boost here, 
and definitely helps with getting to the armor cap. Next up we have the boots. We're going to be looking for S's heirloom here. So that's going to give us movement speed, movement speed after killing an elite, critical strike damage, and mana cost reduction which we don't actually need. But nonetheless we get critical strike chance increased by 20 to 30 percent of our movement speed bonus which is really really handy as after evading this will put our critical strike chance to just over 100 percent and obviously having 100 percent crit is really really good so if you don't have su's heirloom you would want to look for boots with movement speed ranks into teleport intelligence and all stats if you can't get those then look for damage reduction when injured or ranks into flame shield and as for the aspect you would use something like Ghost Walkers here. So while unstoppable and for 4 seconds after, you gain 10-25% to increased move speed and can move freely through enemies. Next up we have the main hand, and we're going to be using a dagger here if possible, and we're going to be looking for intelligence, all stats, critical strike damage, and damage to close enemies. If you can't get those then look for vulnerable damage or mastery skill damage. And as for the aspect, we're going to look for Elementalists here, so that gives us core or mastery skills cast at or above 100 mana, gain 40% increased critical strike chance in my case. Next up we have the Focus, or Offhand, and we're going to want to look for crit chance, cooldown reduction, like a hit percent, and damage reduction from burning enemies. If you can't get that, then look for Intelligence, or all stats. As for the aspect, we're going to be using Conceited here, so we deal 15-25% to increased damage whilst we have a barrier. Next up, we have the Amulet. We're going to be looking for something with total armor percent, cooldown reduction, mastery skills, and ranks into Devouring Blaze. If you can't get those, then look for move speed, damage reduction, or intelligence percent. And for the aspect, we're using three curses here. So that increases the critical strike damage of Meteor and Fireball by 60% if you get a max roll, and double that against healthy targets. So if you get a perfect roll like I have here, that will be 120% increased critical strike damage on a healthy target. Next up we have the Rings. We're going to be using Tal Rash's Iridescent Loop, so that gives us a lot of non-physical damage and lucky hit chance as well as cooldown reduction and resource generation, although we don't need the resource generation with Staff or Coronet. But also, for each type of elemental damage we deal, we gain 10-15% to increased damage for 4 seconds, and dealing elemental damage refreshes all bonuses. So with this build we have 3 stacks, so that will be 36% extra damage in my case. For the other ring, we're going to be using x -Files Corroded Signet, and that gives us all stats, damage over time, lucky hit chance, and cooldown reduction. But also, on lucky hit, our damage over time effects have up to a 50% chance to erupt, dealing 34 to 41k damage of the same type to nearby enemies. So that's really strong with Meteor, as it has the damage over time after effect, and that has a 50% chance on lucky hit to erupt. If you don't have access to these two rings, you would use something with crit chance, crit damage, lucky hit, and close damage or vulnerable damage. And as for the aspects, you would use the aspect of control, so that will give you more damage to immobilize stunned or frozen enemies, and the aspect of shredding blades, so ice blades chance to apply vulnerable is increased by 20%, and the vulnerable duration is increased by 4 seconds. You also gain bonus damage to vulnerable. Just an extra note, if you aren't using a Starfall Coronet, then you would want to be using things like resource generation on rings and the focus, as well as mana cost reduction on the amulet and focus. And for the aspects, you would want to change the elementalist aspect for storm swell, so that will give you increased damage to vulnerable enemies while you have a barrier. And instead of using the shredding blades or control on your rings, you would want to be using prodigies, so using a cooldown will restore 15 to 25 mana. Also, if you're not using a Starfall Coronet, you could use Tybalt's Will in place of the Defensive Pants. Then you would want to use the Defensive Chestplate instead of Raymond. So, no Coronet, 
means defensive chest piece plus two bolts. As for the gems, we're using the green gems in the weapon and offhand for the critical strike damage to vulnerable enemies. We're using the red gems for max life in the armor, although you can use the yellow gems for damage reduction while crowd controlled. And in the jewelry, we're just using resistance gems to fill out the gaps in our resistances to get to max for all of them. So I think that pretty much wraps up the build. As I mentioned, it's all going to be in the planner in the description below, so check that out. Thanks for watching, and if you enjoyed the video, or it helped you out, or even if you just happen to make it this far from autoplay, please leave a like, subscribe, and hit the notification bell as it helps out the channel a lot and is much appreciated. Thanks again, and I'll leave you with some meteor action. Have a great day. Bye. Let's see.